So Apple's WWDC was a few hours ago now, and we got some very cool features from Apple. So let's just start off with probably the biggest change, which is Apple intelligence. So this is essentially AI being brought into the iPhone, as Apple did partner with OpenAI to bring ChatGPT to the iPhone and to Siri. So Siri is going to be a lot smarter, and now it's only in beta, and it's coming later this fall, and will be available only to iPhone 15 Pro users and Pro Max users. So if you have an A17 chip or an M1 iPad or later, which is definitely a very interesting take, but I honestly am not surprised that if all the leaks and rumors did say Apple was going to keep this essentially top of the line, you need the Pro Max and Pro iPhone, which is definitely going to be annoying if you don't have the phone, but right now in the beginning, I feel it's not going to be as needed. It's going to be once you experience it, you don't want to go without it, I feel like, as it's built right into your iPhone, iPad, and Mac OS, and it works with everything across the board, as long as it's an M1 later or an A17 Pro or later. And you can do a bunch of things with AI, such as remove people from photos, remove, you know, objects from photos, mark up photos, write emails, write text messages, have Siri, you know, summarize this page, have it make it this email more formal, and do really anything you could want to do with it, which I just think is so cool that Apple is finally, you know, putting it in the door. They're coming out with generative emojis, so you can make essentially your emoji whatever you want. And you can also make your own images as well. So you essentially have all the different versions of ChatGPT and Dolly built into iOS, which is definitely going to be so cool. Now, Siri is going to be a lot smarter, which is definitely going to be so much nicer. We're even getting a new interface for Siri where it kind of illuminates the outside of your screen instead of just being a little globe, which I definitely think is nice. And you can also just tap on this, the bar at the bottom and search to Siri, which is definitely going to be nice. Now, all of this is encrypted, private. There is nothing being sent to a server. And if it is being sent to a server, it is a private cloud compute, which is something new Apple came out with as it's only used for your request, and you can actually go in and verify how secure this is, and security analysts and everyone can, so you know how well everything is and how secure it is. And that's Apple intelligence. You know, it's very interesting to see, and it's definitely going to be a lot in the future, and it's going to be everywhere. Now, iOS 18 brought so many features, I feel, that were just needed, and I'm also going to lump in iPadOS, as this year, it didn't seem like Apple was like, oh, we're going to give this to the iPad later on. It seems like Apple kind of unified them, which is definitely going to be nice, but iPadOS still might get a few more things. So, we have the ability to design our home screen however we want. So as we discussed in the rumors, you can finally place app icons wherever you want, but you can also tint them and there is a dark mode option for the icons, which is definitely very nice as it completely changes the look of your home screen and your home screen can be unique to you. Personally, I've been testing it out on my M1 iPad Air and the fact that all my app icons like match my wallpaper and are tinted just looks so cool to me as it just is different. You can also now hide apps in a new hidden folder in App Library, which you need Face ID for to get into, which is definitely going to be a nice change as we can finally lock those apps that you might not want someone to get into, as you can hide them and you can lock them. You, We also got a completely redesigned control center, which is now like four pages long, and it definitely takes some getting used to, but seeing that you can now resize widgets and do really much everything you will want from that control center, it is definitely very cool, and also third-party developers will be able to add controls to your control center, similar to how you can add widgets, which is definitely going to be very cool. You can also swap out the lock screen control button. So on the lock screen, we have the flashlight and camera, which we've had for years. Those can now be swapped to anything you want, and same with the action button. It seems Apple is kind of giving us a lot more control over these features and settings, which is definitely going to be very interesting as a user to see how these play out. We also got a completely redesigned photo library, which... I think just makes photos a little more confusing, but we'll have to see once it finally comes out into the public later this year, as I haven't really checked it out yet. Messages is also getting a huge overhaul, as you're having ability to essentially use bold, italics, underline, and use these new text effects to make the message truly pop. We also got tap back with emojis, as well as a completely redesign of the thumbs up, heart, haha, thumbs down, uh, question, exclamation point, as those just look so much better now, and kind of almost new morphic, I believe it's called, which is the newer skew morphism, um, similar to how iOS 6 looked. Apple's kind of merging that, which looks very cool. We also got messages via satellite, so if you don't have service, you can now send your messages using 
satellite, which is definitely going to be very cool as you no longer need to kind of carry around a Garmin or a um, satellite phone, which is going to be so cool. We can also schedule text to send, which finally, it's just something that I feel took for so long and we definitely have been waiting for it. We're also getting RCS support, although that's not launching until later this year. Mail was completely redesigned, but that's not out yet. So it essentially is going to make your inbox just easier to understand. So you'll have primary shopping, announcements, and all these different categories, and then all mail. So you can definitely sort through what you want and get essentially the information you need. And then with Apple Intelligence, it'll be able to say, these are the most important emails you need to take a look at. We also got a passwords app, which is essentially just moving the password section out of settings and adding a couple of other features and just makes you looking at your passwords so much more streamlined. I have to say, having this on my iPad has just been such a game changer just because everything is just very easy to see. We also got topographical maps and game mode is now being brought to the iPhone and iPad. There's also going to be the ability to tap to pay with cash. So if you want to charge someone kind of like Venmo, you can just now tap your iPhones like you would with name drop. AirPods also got a big upgrade. So you can now shake your head if you want to answer or shake your head if you don't want to answer a call, which I definitely think is very cool that you can essentially using your head respond to, you know, Siri reading out, hey, incoming call from John or whoever the case may be. There's now also voice isolation on the AirPod Pros, which will make it easier for anyone to hear you. Notes also got a pretty big upgrade as you now have the ability to have live audio transcriptions and math built right in. So you can, you know, say this is $62, this is blah, 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 and then in it'll total it up. So you don't have to kind of go to all these different sections. You can also now collapse data in notes, which makes it a lot easier to be like, this applies to this, this applies to this, and just keep your notes easier. Journal got some updates, although I don't really know anyone who uses that. The Apple TV app also got a big update, as you now have the ability to call use Insight, as Apple calls it, and view kind of who the characters are in this scene, what this song is and such, which definitely makes it very nice. Home app also got an upgrade, as you're going to be able to share access with guests, have express mode, where you can just essentially, if it detects your U1 or U2 chip, you can just walk in. To your house which is definitely very cool and now all of this is with privacy in mind and apple even took the took it an extra step to give accessories limited access to our phones which definitely makes it a lot nicer now ipad os also got a freaking calculator and i'm so happy to say it only took years it only took 2024 and ai but we finally got a calculator and now everything else comes over from iOS 18, as I said before, but another big thing is math in notes. So Apple really designed the whole calculator app on the iPad to have its own notes with math section, which is definitely very cool as you can do whatever your notes you want. And you can also write in your notes app or your calculator notes app and they sync together and it'll even try to mimic your handwriting. So it looks like it was done by you, which is so cool as using smart script, as Apple calls it, it uses machine learning to match your handwriting to what it might think it might look like, which is very cool. We also got watchOS 11, which brought some great improvements to the Apple Watch, although it also dropped support for some Apple Watches. So if you have a series four, five, or an SE first generation, those are no longer supported. So you need a series six, seven, eight, nine, ultra, ultra two, or an SE two to use. But you can finally have the ability to pause your activity rings and you can also set different goals for different days of the week. So if you're more active on Monday and Tuesday you're not because Monday you're working in the office and then Tuesday you're working from home, you can now set that accordingly. And I know personally, I'll probably adjust it so on weekends my move goals are less so I can still hit them. But knowing that I can also take a rest day and not lose out on my activity streak or anything and just kind of be like, I'm pausing it for the day because I'm on vacation or whatever it may be, will definitely be very useful to have just because of the fact that I no longer have to strive to hit that goal when it may not be attainable. We also got the ability to customize the fitness app on our iPhone to pin whatever data we want and a new vitals app, which essentially is just checking our overnight data. So if you track your sleep, it'll say, you know, these are the, these are what your numbers are. You're doing good today you know, you're doing bad or, hey, you know, you exerted yourself a lot in that workout, you know, maybe, you know, take today as a rest day, kind of like how other apps have been doing, like gentle, gentle or streak, um, which is very cool to see. We're also getting a new training load feature. So after you do a workout, it'll kind of guess how intense that workout was and say, you know, you're doing good, you're doing bad, or, you know, this is your typical, um, take it easy, take it better. As I said before, the photos watch face also got complete redesign as it'll now kind of similar to the iPhone, pick what it believes are the best photos, and you can also set different time options, which just looks so cool. 
the smart stack now have automatic widget, widget suggestions similar to that of the iPhone. So if it sees it's going to rain soon, it can suggest that. If it sees your home, it can suggest, you know, to unlock the garage and stuff like that. You can also now set check-in um, from a workout. So if you're going on a run late at night, you can just swipe over and start a checkout. Double Tap is now also being opened to third-party developers. So third-party developers can implement it into their apps. You can just double tap if you have a Series 9 or Ultra 2 to do that in action. And you can now scroll through any app hands-free, just like the weather app, as Apple shows here. And we also got macOS Sequoia, which is bringing some very useful macOS features like Apple Intelligence, but I'm really a big fan of this iPhone on your Mac. So there's now an app called iPhone Mirroring, which will bring your iPhone app, bring your iPhone to your Mac, and you can interact with it, you get all your notifications. So if you can't pull out your iPhone, you can now do that. You can also share data by dragging and dropping. And now Apple has built in window tiling. So instead of needing Magnet or a third party app, you can now just hold over the maximize button and you'll get all these suggested options, which is so cool. Safari got a redesign with a new reader and more video controls. So if you X out of a tab or minimize it, it'll now go into picture in picture and kind of just suggest what it thinks is best. We're also getting that password app as well. All the new messages features, the typographical maps, all those notes features, the AirPods, and we also got Vision OS 2. And Vision OS 2 is definitely going to be a very cool upgrade if you have a Vision Pro, but right now I definitely think it's kind of a beginning, it's in its beginning days as now it'll automatically create spatial photos from your 2D images. So if you have an image, it'll create a left eye and a right eye and use a 3D effect, which is definitely gonna be very cool because if you take a lot of photos in 2D, you can now view those as 3D. You can also share play using photos with the new Photos app. You can now edit videos. And there was also a new gesture, so if you just look at the palm of your hand, you can just pinch, bring up the apps, and then if you flip your hand over, you can view your notification center, your volume, your control center, etc. There's a new environment of Bora Bora, and you can customize the home view. But overall, this event is shaping up to be a very interesting one, and I gotta say, I'm a big fan of all these upgrades we got, as they just seem to bring so many quality of life improvements that we've been waiting on from Apple for a while now. But let me know what your favorite is with a comment down below, and while you're down there, if you want to hit like and subscribe, I'd appreciate that as well. And I want you to remember, today's a good day to make a great day, and I'll talk to you in the next one. Peace.